So we're gonna talk a little bit more about cranial osteopathic manipulative medicine. So cranial osteopathic manipulative medicine is the application of osteopathic principles to the cranium. We're looking at the anatomy and physiology and how it ties to structure and function. So there's a growing evidence of osteopathic research looking at um, how cranial osteopathic medicine could affect uh, different medical problems and issues. And because of the proximity of the cranium uh, to the central nervous system, this gives us a good opportunity to apply the neurologic model uh, and looking at how we could further examine how cranial osteopathic medicine could affect different neurologic conditions. The primary respiratory mechanism is an inherent physiologic motion that is perceivable throughout the entire body. This is a motion that uh, is there at birth. There is a expansion and contraction of the central nervous system. Uh, another term for this is the cranial rhythmic impulse. So there's been uh, different research related to um, examining the cranial rhythmic impulse and um, associating with what's called traub herring meyer oscillations. Uh, this has been studied using uh, laser Doppler. Um, and so what they found is a cycle about 10 to 14 expansion and contractions uh, per minute. Uh, this correlates with what is uh, being palpated um, by uh, cranial osteopathic physicians. Uh, and if you have a rate that is below 10 or above 14, uh, that is considered abnormal. So the primary respiratory mechanism is based on five basic phenomena. So the first one is that there's an inherent motility of the brain and spinal cord. So there is an expansion and contraction of the brain and spinal cord, and there's a movement there since, present since birth. There's a fluctuation of the CSF. So there is no direct blood flow of the central nervous system. Uh, the central uh, cerebral spinal fluid bathes the brain and the spinal cord. And so for motion and movement of the fluid there, there's a certain fluctuation that allows for transport of nutrients and weights. There is movement of the intracranial and intraspinous membranes. So the dural membranes attach to the cranial bones. And similar to how ligaments attach to bone, the dural membranes help to guide uh, and limit the amount of motion and movement present at the cranial bones. There's an articular mobility of the cranial bones. So the cranial bones themselves have motion and movement based on the different types of sutures and attachments. There might be more of a hinge-like motion with the serrated sutures. There might be more of a gliding motion uh, when you have more of a, a squamous suture. So um, the cranial bones have a innate ability to articulate and move. Finally, there's an involuntary, involuntary mobility of the sacrum between the ilia. So due to the dural connections uh, from the cranium down to the sacrum via the spinal cord, uh, the sacrum actually uh, will nutate and counter nutate due to that pull. And so there is a mobility of that sacrum um, as it articulates with the pelvis. Mm -hmm.